Now this is an introduction to Lyric X uh, version 2. This is the new user interface, Lyric X. And the first thing that we've done is we've allowed you as the user to move your uh, menus around where you want. So for instance, I want to move my browser into this section. And these are called docking panes. So again, I have the browser now as full, but it's on the right. Or you might want to have it viewing all the time. So let's move it to the bottom and dock it to this one. But in my case, I like it along the bottom. I use my browser sometimes, but not all the time. So why let it waste space on the, on the GUI? Now, once I'm happy with this, I can actually go to View Workspaces. I have two that I've saved. There's three that we give you. And so I'm going to call this Fill Design because this is how I want to use my menus for design purposes. Now I'm going to open up a Playout one. I've set one for Playout where I, where I basically left the tools open that a Playout operator would use. Now we've added one along the bottom called Console. And it's actually in the bottom because that's where I put it. But it gives you information. For instance, it tells you how long that message uh, took to read in seconds. And it gives you other information. So for instance, this message here has a bitmap on it. I'm going to purposely delete that bitmap. So when I call the message up again, it actually gives me information in the console that, that it's a missing asset. Now this is great if you're missing true type fonts. It'll actually tell you what the true type fonts are that, are, that it's missing. So you can have that shown or have it hidden if you want. Now under Config Preferences, the menu is basically the same, but we've changed the name of one, called it a Project Folder. And the reason I'm showing you this is we've actually added a shortcut key for the Project Folder right on, on the GUI. Uh, under the Timeline, we've added the default node length. So when you bring a, a node into the scene, now it's at one second. And the uh, default interpolation, set to ease in. And a flag for global toggle keyframe indicator. And I'll explain what that is in just a second. So let's just bring uh, this McDonald's logo in. And you can see now this new timeline. It came in at one second because that's what I had it set for. And I'm going to move that over. And now that keyframe, if you right click on there, it's set to ease in. And if I turn my global keyframe on, this button right here, all along the bottom turns red, and that was what I flagged in the preferences setting. Now in older versions of software, we had a transition properties menu where we had the message properties information, conditional transitions, hold, first frame, last frame, and this is how we added elements into each of our transitions. Now we've simplified that a great deal in the new software. We've, we have a new menu called scene properties, and this is where you name the scene describe the scene if you want, add it, make it persistent, change the priority setting of it. Uh, you can even add a background to this one because this is related to the scene itself. And the rest of the transition properties in the old software, we've simplified a great deal. There's actually no menus needed for that. So I'm just going to start with a fresh scene here. And let's add a 3D primitive. We'll add the cube. And I'm just going to add an image as well. So let's bring the Nissan logo on here. Now with our new timeline, we've added a lot of new elements. First of all, you can see that this is in uh, seconds, the timeline right now. But I can right click on here and change this into frames if that's what you feel comfortable with. I'm going to leave it as, uh, as time code though. Now this is how you expand and contract that timeline. Very easy to set it to wherever you want, or you can do it with this, this key here. Now this one right now is set to 46 seconds in length. I'm going to leave it on time, on time code. I can actually change the maximum amount down to whatever I want. So I'm just going to bring it down to around 5 seconds. So again, very easy to change that, that setting. And now I've really expanded the timeline so I can see my keyframes a lot better. Now, I'm going to add an effect in and an effect out, and this is how we do it. We click on this little arrow here, this plus, select my effect in. Now, how do I get my elements into the effect in? Remember over here, we're under the default properties, 
we had to select what we wanted and then we had to add them into the into the properties so in the new software just select in the scene graph what you want and simply drag it into the timeline so there's no menu needed for that okay so if I wanted to come down to the one second mark and add a keyframe it's not a right click simply adding clicking on the little circle in between the arrows will add the keyframe and then I rewind it and then I'm going to use my XYZ which I'm going to go into a little bit later to push those the start keyframe off to the left so that's how simple it is to add elements to the transition properties now if I wanted to move that the length of that because I only wanted it out one second it's a simply drag it just drag the endpoint so that's a change from the old software where we had to actually hold it because you don't want the the keyframe to go now if you want to, the keyframe to go proportionally that's where you would hit alt and drag the keyframe just so it makes it simpler for people to to change the length of the timeline Now, I, again, with this, if I wanted to edit the shortcut or put a shortcut key on there, that's how I would do it. You can add transitions, rename transitions, prevent reactivations, show on the playout panel, uh, copy a transition just by simply right-clicking on that transition tab. And again, I can hit rename transition, or if I just click in there, and to start typing that's as easy it is as it is to, to change the name of that transition tab okay these little toolbars along the top that changes the background color and you can edit that to a different color or a checker background like we could, could before this is my safe title area if I want to see the 4 by 3 just click on there this shows my grid this is my selection guides so again, the selection guides, I'm just going to bring this uh, star in there. That's the selection guides. If I wanted to quickly turn that off, just click that button and turn it off. And the last one, I'm just going to bring another one in, the stars. If I moved the canvas around, I'm not moving the image around, I'm moving the canvas around, you'll see that the little toolbar turned red in the side and I, uh, on the left hand side and I wanted to change that this button is for masking again these menus can be left open or this is just a quick toolbar button to get to those menus this is my auto spacing for doing bullet points this is the auto hide window conditional transitions hotspots and my macro now in my case my macro window is along the bottom and that's why it didn't pop open because that's where it is but it actually selected that okay this scene has four different elements on it, an image movie 2d and 3d text now we added a new general tab right here so when that's selected everything that I touch in the scene so that was an image it shows me all the image properties I don't have to right click on the image this is the movie properties that's my text and then this is my 3d text so again there's no right clicking needed it's all right there now in the older versions of the software we had um, something called events we've replaced events with a thing called triggers so this is how easy is it, it is so on the effect in in this one so let's say I, I want to go down to the three second mark I want to add a trigger not an event add a trigger which is that button right at the top I'm just going to bring that timeline down but you see under the general tab now that's a trigger so you can rename that I'm going to say trigger effect out and then I'm going to add and there's many things you can see the transitions the external the pause I just want to add a transition and then what shows up is transitions in that scene so now when I hit play at the three second mark 
that image is, or that scene is going to go off the screen. So again, events are now called triggers. All of the text functions are under one key. So in, in this case, I'm going to add some text, just type some text, and I'm going to lasso it. And again, we have apply to selection there, so that's what's happened there. This is where I add my edge or my shadow or my offset or border. I'll click apply to selection to do that. Now, if I want to add a template, go back to there and say add the 2D text template. And just like before, we can move that and resize that template. Now you can see in here, it added the apply to template button. So if you're inside a template, you just hit apply to template. And under the general tab, this is where we would left justify, center, right justify, turn word wrap on, turn numeric, um, so forth, flag it as auto erase, and size to fit. And you can see the DB linking as, at the bottom as well. So let's add a 2D crawl to the window. Again, type it, but in the general tab, all the information for that crawl is right in there. Okay, so I want to uh, just briefly show you what the, what the browsers. We've added the maximum amount of browsers as three. So if I want to add a secondary browser here, here's the browser window. And again, I can move that around and put it anywhere I want. And now I'm just going to set the source of that browser. So that's for fonts, messages, and images. So very similar to what it was before, but we can only have a maximum of three on the screen at any time. This is go, goes through page by page or goes right to the end, just quick buttons. Now, before we had the X, Y, Z properties, we've changed the X, Y, Z properties to transform properties. This is how we change the X, Y, Z position of that image. And we have center for each one of those, but we have a master position reset as well, where it resets the X, Y, and Z if you needed to do that. So center rotation and the rotation, all the buttons basically do the same as what, what it was before, what, what we've condensed them all. And notice the opacity at the top as well. So we can actually change the opacity right in here. We don't have to go to surface properties to do that because that is actually a transform menu. Okay, in previous versions of software, I'm just going to touch on timers for just a second. This is how you would set up the timer. You have hot buttons for toggle start and show. And, you know, we could go to set that GPI and, and hit execute and put in different, image or different menu buttons for that clock or for that timer. So in the new version, we've changed this a little bit and it's actually a little bit easier. And it's a lot more functional as well. We can do a lot more. So again, under the general tab, there's the timer information. Timer down. Now I can set the start to be, you know, 10 minutes. Okay, but now how do we start and stop this timer? Well, there's a couple of ways. I'm going to actually create a, time, a transition tab. And we're going to call this timer start. And then we'll do another one and we'll say timer stop. Now this is a form of a trigger to start something. We're going to trigger something. So again, I, I put a trigger in here and I can rename that trigger to whatever I want. And then we add a timer. So what do we want to, we want to start that timer. Now we go to the stop and I can add it to the same trigger or I can add a new trigger if you want. But the same thing, I'm going to add a timer trigger. Now, because I'm adding it to the same one, it prompted me with that, but that's okay. I can do that. And then I want to do a stop. So I've added my start and stop timers. And again, I can put a shortcut in here. I can say I want uh, the start to be an F5 and the stop to be, let's say, an F6. 
So now when I hit play and I hit F5, the timer starts ti uh, counting down. And when I hit F6, it stops. So pretty simple to do that. Now I wanted to show you something new that you're able to do. So let's bring that um, timer on again. And I'm going to call this one timer up because I wanted to do a timer up. And we'll leave it at zero because we want to start it at zero. And so if I come down to the three second mark and I add a trigger. Now I could be doing this in other transitions, but I'm actually doing it all in the default. So bring that, uh, that timeline down to three seconds. And we're going to click Add, Timer, and, and I'm going to set this to do a stop. So the, the, the timer will actually stop at three seconds. So I come back to the start, and I actually have to add a start. So we added a start now. Okay, so there's a start at the beginning, and at the end, we have a stop. So now when I hit play, it actually starts, but when it reaches the three-second mark, it actually stops. So something that you can do with the triggers and timers. Okay, this one we're going to go over a template update ordering. So you'll notice that this template has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now here's a new menu, update ordering you'll see that the order of this is not quite what I want. I actually have template 1, 2, 3, then I go to 7, and then 4, 5, 6. And this follows the same way in the template update. So if I wanted to change that one to bring it down, just simple uh, select it, and then drag it down, and it actually moves down in the order. So now in the template update ordering, it's in proper order. And this follows, us through, follows through to the newsroom as well. This is where we would set the II update, and under the T column, which is checked, that was for the template update. So that's how easy it is to look at all the templates and, and set them properly. Okay, under Images, you'll see that there's an update mode, Keep Existing or Use New Size. So what is that? I have two images on the screen. This Volkswagen logo, it's actually a circle, but if you look at the crop, it's actually kind of square. And this headshot is, looks like a 16 by 9. So both images are different. Now, if I go to this Volkswagen logo, go to my headshots, and select the headshot, you'll notice that the headshot actually came in with the new um, size of it. But it's in, the, it's in the size and position that the Volkswagen logo is in. So it still comes in at 16 by 9. Now if I change that and say keep existing size and do the reverse, it's going to take that square crop logo and when I bring it in, there's the Volkswagen one at the bottom. And you'll see that it's round there, but when I bring it in, it's going to be squashed because I had that to keep existing size. So just a new feature in the images. Now, uh, the user profiles, we had workspaces. These are profiles as well. So profiles save your settings. So it's now an XML file. But when I do this, I can actually select what I want to save. So maybe I don't want to save the diagnostics or the hardware settings when I save this, just the project folder and browser and application settings. So again, something new for that. Okay, in our scene graph, you notice all the images, uh, the icons beside. It, it, it's a very quick way of saying, okay, that's text, that's an image, that's a group. But you also have filtering. So I'm going to filter on type and say, let's say, just show me the, all the images in the scene. So a very quick way of seeing that. Let's go down to 3D primitives. So we see that there's only 3D primitives in the scene. And let's say, let's pick something else. How about 2D text? You'll see that there's only two 2D text. So again, a, another great feature in this. So that's a quick overview of Lyric X version 2.